Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar, Empowering Pharmacy First with Automation. It should provide you valuable insights and practical guidance for pharmacies leveraging automation to thrive in the pharmacy first landscape. Tonight, we will explore the challenges and discuss how automation can address challenges and contribute to the successful implementation. If you have any questions during the session, please put them in the chat and we will answer them at the end of the session. My name is Boyana and my colleague Ferdinand and I represent BD Rova, pharmacy automation solution provider with more than 13,000 installations in more than 60 countries. Our mission is to help our customers succeed by providing innovative solutions that improve efficiency and profitability. And now I'm delighted to present you our distinguished guest speaker, Mr. Paul Maybury, a highly experienced and respected community pharmacist from South Wales. Paul, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. With me, 30 years of your experience in the field, uh, you are recognized for your innovative approaches to improving patient outcomes through the technology. So please uh, let us uh, watch a video uh, that will uh, show you a short introduction to the Pharmacy X, the cloud-based solution that is designed to revolutionize your pharmacy. Today, most pharmacies still operate the same way they did 15 years ago, using the same outdated PMR systems. Inefficient paper-based processes mean staff are drowning in paper prescriptions and pharmacists are tied up doing needless repetitive checks. We've been operating community pharmacies for over 30 years, so we knew there must be a better way. That's why we created Pharmacy X. Say goodbye to endlessly looking through piles of prescriptions. Our paperless workflow gives complete visibility of any prescription in the dispensary. Save your clinical checks for up to 12 months. Only recheck if there's a change, reducing repeat checks by up to 90%. Accurate stock levels enable just-in-time stock ordering and cut stock holdings by 75%. Enhance efficiency with our patient basket system. Stock deliveries are scanned directly to patient baskets, eliminating wasted steps. Boost safety with barcode accuracy checks and remove 80% of manual accuracy checks. Plus, with cloud technology, expensive servers and networks are a thing of the past. By optimizing the dispensing process, we free pharmacists to focus on what truly matters, patient care. The result, satisfied customers and increased revenue and profitability. Pharmacy X, helping to bring your pharmacy into the digital age. So Paul, thank you again for joining us tonight and from your huge experience. We know that this scheme, similar to the Pharmacy uh, First, is already running uh, for a couple of years in Wales. Can you please tell us what are the biggest challenges that pharmacies are facing in adopting to Pharmacy First demand? Um, thank you. I think the, the most obvious challenge is the fact that we're all doing more prescriptions than ever that the increase in volume because of other chains failing in what they're, in what they're delivering. So lots of people turn into us as independents and we end up dispensing more prescriptions. At the same time, the, we've now, the government wants us to do more. Um, it's given us the opportunity to do more with pharmacy first, but then how are you going to do more if you're already doing all those extra prescriptions? So the, the, the obvious thing you need to do is to free up the pharmacist from the dispensing process. Now, we knew that the existing legacy PMRs, what, they're, they're the same the same process for the last 15, 20 years, almost where my entire career have been using the same software, which is crazy when you think that you probably haven't got a phone in your pocket that's more than four years old, but we're all using this old, old technology. Um, so we looked around, we tried to see if there were any, any um, software that could could help us, and there was nothing out there that really did what we wanted to do. So we wanted to do three things really to, um, to, to move forward with this. One was 
freeing up the pharmacist from the dispensing process to spend more time with patients, delivering services, um, and generating more income from the, the, the fee generating services that are now available. But while the pharmacist was in the consultation room to deliver these services, we want them to be um, safe in the knowledge that the dispensing going on in, still in the dispensary was safe. So we wanted to make sure that no labels could be produced unless the correct barcode was scanned. And the third thing we wanted to do was make sure that we were on top of stock. These days, more than ever, stock issues are, are there as a part of our day-to-day -day -day lives these days, which was different to, to years ago. So we wanted to make sure that the stock control was really accurate. So rather than using, um, the answer to that was rather than using PIP codes like every other PMR system uses, and therefore the system thinks that a Torvastat in 40 Teva is different than a Torvastat in 40 Accord, um, we use the DMD codes. It's the same code that the prescribers use when they write the prescriptions. It's the same code that the pricing bureau uses when, they, when they're pricing our prescriptions. So we're using it, um, I think, uniquely for dispensing. So it means that We've, we've now been able to give really accurate stock control um, integrated into the robots so that the, we can just press a button and we get full synchronization of what's in the robot as well as what's outside of the robot. So that gives me control of, uh, of my stock. I know what I've got, what I haven't got. I, I can take the opportunity to, to buy things when they are available. Um, the freeing up the pharmacists, the, the biggest thing to free up the pharmacist was, the, was removing the the, the repetitive nature of having to do a clinical check every single time, even though you've seen that prescription before. And I think the only reason that most of us did, did that, do that, was because there was no way of recording that change. So if you were to see a GP, the GP would say, you, your blood pressure's fine, your cholesterol's fine, keep taking the tablets, I'll see you in a year's time. But then they issued a 28-day prescription, which comes to us every 28 days, and we are checking the same thing every day, not adding any value, but just taking up time. Yeah. So it, it was all we, all I wanted to do when we when we designed this software was to say, if I'm happy with this particular um, combination of medications for this particular patient, then I don't want to see it again for up to a period of 12 months, unless there's a change, or unless it's a high-risk drug or high-risk patient, in which case, I want to see it. So I can sign off now with Pharmacy X. We can sign off a prescription and say, I don't need to see this for 12 months. But if there is a change when the prescriptions are downloaded, I will need to see it and OK it again. So mm -hmm. freed up the pharmacist from the dispensing process. So we've seen an, a 90% reduction in the amount of time that pharmacists are spending doing clinical checks. Because of um, using barcode scanning before a label comes out it reduces the amount of final checks you need to do even further reduced with robots because the, the, you've got a, the robot picking with the with the barcode you've got the label being uh, only created if you scan the right barcode so therefore the dispensers can't create a dispensing error and um, so they can give that straight to the patient unless it's a a split pack, if you haven't split into a pack, to, for instance, dispensing 60 paracetamol of a box of 100, the dispenser could potentially introduce an error. And therefore, anything that's got a split in it does not need to go for a final check by an ACP or a pharmacist. So mm -hmm. three things we've managed to deliver, freeing up the pharmacists, making dispensing safer and giving us better stock control. Yes, yes, it definitely is designed from a pharmacist to pharmacists, which is uh, incredible. And do you want us to uh, t to take us uh, through the uh, system to see how it looks like? Yeah, because what we what, what mm -hmm. we what we've did. So I've been using BD uh, rower machines for 12, 13 years. Um, when I first started using it, I was using Proscript. It worked. Mm -hmm. We were doing hub and spoke. We I think we were the first company in the country before long before Boots and Lloyds were doing hub and spoke. We were doing that in our little operation in Wales, but we couldn't make it efficient because we were limited by the by the PMR. We still needed to go through checking the 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 um, the prescriptions every single time. And although we were sending seventy percent of our prescriptions from our branches into our central hub, we was only maybe doing the work of 30% of those prescriptions because 70% was still being done in the branch, which was ordering the prescriptions, collecting the prescriptions in those days, collecting the prescriptions, um, the interactions with the patient, reconciling the prescriptions when it came back from the hub. So there's a lot of work still done at the at the branch. So the, though we, we, we got it to work, the limitations of the PMR meant that we couldn't really make it efficient. So now we've got a system where 
I can, as a, my, my pharmacist can download the prescriptions, can do the clinical check, save the clinical check, and they, once they've saved the clinical check, it automatically goes to the robot. They select a patient and they click pick all. Um, mm -hmm. and everything is sent out to the robot. So you imagine the second time that happens, you download the prescription from the spine. You, you've got 100 patients that you've downloaded for. You can say, check all. It automatically pushes it through the clinical check where they've already been checked and there's no changes. That goes into the robot. And as you see then from the video that you're just about to show, that mm -hmm. it's a really efficient process. Yes. Let me put up the video so you can take us through the process. So the prescription would have automatically been clinically checked because it had been seen before. And then the, the software here, which is a Pharmacy X software, the dispenser has just clicked on pick all and the robot starts picking stuff. The robot in this case is in the in room, so there's a little bit of and the stock starts arriving. The dispenser then scans the product. If it's the correct product, it produces a label. If it's the wrong product, the label isn't produced. And th th these packs can be scanned in whatever order. You can see the screen turning green as each line is scanned. It does it to you. You don't really even need to look at the screen. The system is up taken over for you. You scan each product, scan it, and, and then produces the label. And then once you scan the, the final product, you can see the screen change is a little bit different to, to, to different view. Um, you can see now at the top, there's a, there's a blue line that actually says um, print bag labels. So the system knows that you've got all the stock. You couldn't have made a mistake. It's ready to go into a bag. The dispenser is now pressing the button that says print the bag labels. The bag labels then attached to the, to the bag, along with a, a 2D barcode which can either integrate to your delivery software, to your 24-7 collection point software, um, it's ready, ready to go. It can even produce uh, labels which prompt for an NMS or blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That. Thank really you. simple, it's really straightforward. Yes, it, it really looks uh, very uh, user-friendly, the interface. Okay, going back to uh, our slide, uh, I would like to ask Ferdinand to explain uh, to the audience uh, how does the BD Roba uh, complement this and actually helps uh, with these challenges uh, facing the Pharmacy X to, to liberate more time. What is the portfolio, Ferdinand? Yes, hello. <clears throat> good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you, Paul and Bihana, for putting this together. Um, and as Brianna mentioned, at uh, BD Roa is one of the biggest uh, robotic providers in the world. You know, for uh, retail pharmacists, um, large uh, distribution, uh, uh, you know, organisations. Um, and uh, over the years, over the thirty years of experience, you know, we developed a range of products that can address uh, multiple needs. You know, from uh, uh, the pharmacist perspective. So from your small pharmacy, your small independent pharmacy, up to your largest, you know, wholesale distributor, you know, our product range is there to help. And uh, in the slide, basically, it just gives you a, a bit of an overview of all the products that we have available. Um, uh, on the left-hand side, you can see uh, Restore and Pick. That those are our original dis back dispensing machines. Our, our BD Row VMAX, which is a custom-built machine, um uh, and uh <coughs> fitted in most pharmacies and then your bd row are smart you know which is a solution for the smaller pharmacies you know that don't want to necessarily invest in in a massive robot um and uh, coupled to this you have the bd row easy load that um, enables automatic uh, storing and packing of uh, your stock that comes in now Moving on to the move and ship side of things, um, we also provide solutions to uh, large distribution chains, you know, where um, we have a crate system uh, when you want to do bulk dispensing. Um, and uh, there's also a micro solution, um, we call it micro fulfillment solution, which is more relevant to small uh, retail pharmacies, you know, especially if people are looking to. Uh, implement a small hub and spoke setup, you know, where you can actually uh, start to dispense in batches 
and uh, you know there's a conveyor system that helps you with that order process. We also Ferdinand, we've lost you. You are now on mute. Can yes, you you're back. Yes. Apologies for that. I don't know what happened there. But anyways, um, we also have a solution uh, where patients can uh, come and collect their medication after hours. Um, called the BD row pickup, which became you know much more relevant after the uh, pandemic, uh, where pharmacies you know uh, had to allow only a certain amount of patients to come in, and uh, <coughs> with, where there's contactless uh, pickup of medication, um, and we also enable pharmacists with the BD row V V motion, which is a screen. Um, uh, that's attached to the robot uh, to actually sell and cross-sell um, their over-the-counter medication uh, because you can store that inside, you know, your BD Row VMAX or your BD Row Smart, and you can create virtual planograms uh, from which you can do that. And then, lastly, uh, a lot of pharmacies are divesting from pouch and uh, especially the law the larger change for from uh, tray uh, dispensing which leaves a lot of customers actually out um, you know floating around with no solution uh, when it comes to their tray fulfillment and there's a big opportunity for independent pharmacies to pick up those patients um, and for that, you know, we have uh, what we call a BD rower dose, which is pouch packaging, and then your tray dispensing machines, um, which comes in the form of a Senmed XF and Senmed Ultra. Um, and we've seen uh, customers of ours grow their, their patient base, you know, tremendously mm -hmm. using these machines, and they see quite a, a good return on investment, you know, or a fast return on investment. Uh, when using these machines. So what this illustrates, it doesn't matter where the patient journey is and also uh, where, you know, how the pharmacists want to, to implement automation, we have a product solution available for every stage, you know, um, of uh, their development. And all these uh, different products, you know, are interchangeable and modular to a certain extent, uh, where you can start small and then, you know, add to the system, you know, as you grow. And uh, that's me for, <clears throat> it's yes. just a whistle stop to Abriana. Thank you, thank you. So we've seen uh, from, from Paul's presentation of the Pharmacy X uh, software and Ferdinand's uh, DD portfolio that all of these solutions enable pharmacists to free up more time uh, and uh, in that sense have more consultations and uh, maximize the pharmacy first contract. And now maybe the most interesting part uh, of the webinar is uh, how does it actually work in practice? What does it mean to have uh, automation or better said, what does it mean when you don't have in, uh, automation compared once you automate? Uh, Paul, back to you uh, with the following slide. Yeah, so the, the, these are before and after slides of, it, of uh, one of my pharmacies. So you can see on the left-hand side, be before automation, we were doing five consultations a day. Um, we did have an IP, an independent prescriber, that was doing 20 consultations a month. You can see that where the income per annum was £28,000 per year. Once we automated and freed up the pharmacist so that they were able to do 15 consultations a day, you can see the difference that, that that's made to the to the, 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 the service income that comes in. We're now generating £84,500 a year just on NHS service income with a potential 22500 on private services, um, generating over £100,000 a year. We've got some Pharmacy X users that are genera generating well over £120,000 a year in service income. And the only way that you can do that, I think, is by freeing up the pharmacists to be able to deliver on more consultations. Now, these, these are Welsh figures with Welsh services, so it's a little bit different. But in, in England, they've done some calculations. And then, so if you were assumed that you were doing um, maybe 30 consultations a month by October, plus the, the £1,000 um, 
monthly payment, you generate seven, the equivalent pro rata multiplying up for the year would be 17 and a half thousand pounds. But if you were able to do the same number of uh, pharmacy first consultations to the similar consultations that we've got in Wales, so that would be the common ailments, the IP, the emergency supply, the sore throat test and treat, those four. According to those figures there, we do we at Maybury's in this branch are doing 207 of those. So if they were all 207 pharmacy first consultations a month, that would be generating you £50,000 a year in income. Yes, but that's, that's really, uh, it speaks for itself and uh, it's amazing. Uh, thank you for sharing this data with the audience. Yeah. And uh, I would ask uh, if anyone from the audience has any questions to ask that we, okay, there is Nicholas saying, hi, thanks for sharing all of the information question. Does the store and pick system has to be at the same physical level of the dispensing counter? I mean, can the store and pick be placed in a basement under the pharmacy, which is located at the ground floor, such any such installation configuration in operation anywhere? Ferdinand, I guess this one is for you. Yes, no, it can definitely uh, be done. It obviously depends on uh, the layout of your store and any structural, uh, uh, how can you say, objects in the way. But we have definitely done that, you know, um, where uh, the robot is downstairs and then medication is sent upstairs, you know, to where it's being dispensed. Um, we have examples where it's being dispensed, let's say, on the ground floor and the robot is on the first floor and um, it will then, uh, you know, dispense the, the medication through a chute downstairs. Um, and the row of VMAX, as I said, you know, is a customizable robot and we have very, lots of different examples of ways that people um, have placed their robots. Um, so, yes, it can be done. Perfect. Nicholas is typing, yes, he's there. okay, thanks. Uh, good, uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, please do so, uh, either to Paul directly or us uh, at Bidirova directly. We would be happy to help you uh, to uh, with any solutions uh, or any consultations uh, that are, of course, free of charge. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. And oh, okay, oh, Chris is having Chris. another. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another question. Uh, Nicholas is typing too. Okay. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Chris, very much. Thank, thank you, everyone, for joining tonight. Have a great evening. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank take you. Bye-bye. Thank you.